From Caracas, Venezuela, this is from the south. Tell us through English's daily news brief. My name is Regan Devines. Category 3 Hurricane Irma is moving towards the Leeward Islands, with Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, Haiti and Cuba all potentially in its path. The governor of Puerto Rico, Ricardo Orsojo, has announced a list of at least 456 refugee centers as one of the territory's precautionary measures. Puerto Rico's Federal Emergency Agency says it also has half a million liters of bottled water and 300,000 meals on standby, as well as enough power generators to cope with any emergency. The storm is moving at a speed of 22 kilometers per hour with hurricane warnings already issued for the islands of Antigua and Barbuda, Anguilla, Montserrat and St. Kitts. The Colombian government and the country's biggest remaining guerrilla organization, the ELN, have agreed on a temporary bilateral ceasefire just two days before the Pope arrives in Colombia. The formal announcement was made in Quito, Ecuador, where the two sides have been holding peace talks. Both the government and the, and the guerrillas stressed that the aim was to bring humanitarian relief to the civilian population. But the ELN warned about the increase in violence against social movements. I have the enormous pleasure to start this week, this month of September, making a very important announcement for the consolidation of Latin America and the Caribbean as a peace territory. Announcing this agreement, called the Agreement of Quito, gives us profound satisfaction and joy, and wills us to congratulate the Colombian Army delegation and the ELN delegation from the bottom of our hearts. Change is a form of relief for the population that received the consequences of the conflict directly. Seems like a paradox, but in Colombia, in the middle of this peace process that has moved forward greatly and sometimes with difficulty, we also have a growing violent situation, mostly with social leaders and communities. So this ceasefire is a relief to the suffered population and the compromises that both parties have agreed go directly to that. The Colombian President Juan Manuel Santos had earlier given details of the ceasefire from Bogotá. It'll start next October 1st. It'll be valid initially for 102 days, which means until January 12th next year. And it will be renewed as the agreements and negotiations are respected and we move forward on the other issues. The priority is to protect our citizens. That's why during this period the kidnappings will cease and also the pipeline attacks and other hostilities against our people. Venezuela's foreign minister has complained about interference in his country's internal affairs by several European countries. Jorge Ariasa delivered a formal note of protest to the ambassadors of Spain, Germany, Italy and the United Kingdom. Bueno, hoy citamos a los embajadores. Well, today, we call the ambassadors of the Federal Republic of Germany, the Italian Republic, the Spanish Kingdom and the United Kingdom. We had to call them with urgency given the permanent intromissions of these ambassadors and their governments in the internal issues of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela and the functioning of its democracy and public offices. For the third day in a row, Israel's navy has attacked Palestinian fishing vessels as security forces cracked down on youth in the Gaza Strip. No Harazin, our Gaza correspondent, has more. Overnight, Israeli forces clashed with Palestinian uh, youth, injured two Palestinian young men, and also arrested over uh, 15 of them during their night raids in the West Bank overnight. Here in the Gaza Strip, again, and for the third day in a row, Israeli naval forces uh, violated the agreed Palestinian-Israeli ceasefire and attacked Palestinian fishermen off the coast of Gaza City. Today marks the fourth day of the uh, Eid al-Adha, which is the uh, biggest Islamic holiday in the Islamic calendar. And despite the fact that it's a holiday, Palestinians head to their works and uh, faced uh, these Israeli violations, such as what is happening with the Palestinian fishermen and also uh, farmers in the eastern border between Gaza and Israel. Concern is growing over the violence against Rohingya Muslims in Myanmar. Nearly 90,000 members of the persecuted Muslim community have fled to Bangladesh since August 25th. The concern has reached as far as Russia, where thousands of people rallied in support of Rohingya Muslims. There have been reports of rapes, murders and acts of arson perpetrated by the Myanmar army. Kenya's election commission has set October 17th as a date for the country's new presidential elections. The elections held in August 8th, won by President Uhuru Kenyatta, was annulled by the Supreme Court last Friday. 
Some Kenyans celebrated the ruling, saying it reduced the potential for a repeat of the kind of violence that followed the disputed 2007 presidential election, in which more than 1,200 people were killed. Staff from two United Kingdom branches of the fast food chain McDonald's participated in an historic first ever strike over poor pay and working conditions. Approximately 40 workers from the Cambridge and Crayford locations are airing dissatisfaction with the company's zero hours contracts, clauses and low wages. The employees are demanding a £10 an hour basic salary for staff aged 25 and over. They are also demanding more security working hours. Earlier, we highlighted the ceasefire agreement in Colombia between the ELN and the government. Tell us through English features how the country is marking the upcoming visit by the Pope with a symbol of peace made out of bullets. Head to our website to learn more about the collection of medallions made from material once used in the country's longest running war. And there is more on these and other stories on our website, tillisurtv.net slash English. And for updates on the day's top stories, you can visit us on Instagram, Facebook, and on Twitter. For Tillisurt English, I'm Regan Evite.